Hello and welcome to a very chaotic rundown on the Barefoot Miniatures channel where we go over Demons of the Ruin Storm. So this is the Demons of the Ruin Storm review. I'm going to work through the entire PDF. Yeah, we going to cover basically everything if this has just been released it's not going to be like a full meta review of it that will probably come later when it's matured a little bit and i've wrapped my head more around each individual demon unit but it's more of a first impressions and how i think each unit and the army in general can be used the first thing to say is before we kick off with demons is this is a great army for just modeling opportunities across the entire range We've even got a designer's note that, like all those Citadel miniatures and Forge World offers a range, converting and things like that allow you further tailoring of your force. So long as your opponent knows what you're doing and is obvious with the units, basically go for your heart's content. Like I've always had an idea of doing the film Death Watch with Andy Serkis playing like a an evil World War One soldier. Um, there is basically Death Watch. Is, oh, I suppose it's a 15, 20 year old film now, so I can <laughs> spoilers for the film Death Watch. It's World War One, set in the trenches, and a squad of British soldiers advances forwards and comes into a, a weirdly quiet stretch of the line. And then Q basically getting fucked around with by a demon, and the trenches and hazards of the trenches are basically come alive and start killing off the soldiers so we get Andy Circus killed by razor wire coming out of the ground um or barbed wire coming out of the ground and sort of like snaking round him and going through his his mouth I think it is and then out of his ear um we get people being eaten by rats and just various hazards of the trenches attacking these soldiers. So I've, that's actually one of the ideas I've really wanted to do is like sort of uh, <laughs> tentacles of barbed wire coming up out of the ground, like going into a Marine and out of a Marine and just killing them off. And it, the demon's army list allows that creativity in it. So let your imagination absolutely run wild. The first thing to look at, I suppose, is the demon's special rule. And that still applies to the demon army in general. Now, and there are one or two units that just sort of mitigate slight elements of it, but it's something to bear in mind across the entire game. So demons have their strength and toughness modified by plus one on game turns one and two. They get plus zero on three and four, so it's just the base stat line. Games five and game turns five and six, they get minus one and minus two on seven plus. So basically in your demon's army, you want to be doing a lot of damage, turns one and two, three and four, and then you want to have done your damage by then so that you can just eke out your existence on turn five, six, and into seven, where you're going to be much more easily destroyed. So as I'm going through the unit profiles, I'm gonna to try to remember how things will affect that profile as we go through, but mainly I will be going off the, the base profile is just the main sort of interactions with the game in general, because it will, we effectively are gonna quadruple the amount of profiles each unit has, even if it is quite easy to remember as you go along in the game. So all demons have the fear one special rule, so that's <laughs> strong. If you're not fighting stubborn units all the time, and fearless units. Any hits inflicted by a demon by a weapon with the four special rule gain instant death. Now that's also going to interact with um, your basically invulnerable save that you gain as a demon in this army list, which is ethereal invulnerability. Ethereal invulnerability gives you an invulnerable save against all attacks that don't have four special rule. So four special rule will effectively be doing instant death and ignoring your invulnerable save as a demon. So psychers will be absolutely terrifying to this army. 
which I suppose is actually a really good fluffy point. I I like it as a rule because they are better at banishing them to the warp, right? Finally, we get the leadership parts of the demon entry. So you are immune to the effects of fear, automatically pass pinning regroup test, cannot choose to fail a morale check due to our weapons are useless. So against like, like Leviathans, if you've got strength three, you won't be able to choose to fail it and fall back just so you don't have to get stuck in combat with them. Um, that'll come into it, I suppose, mostly on game turns uh, five and six, where your basic demons, which are strength four, can't now hurt a Leviathan, so will want to just run away, but can't do. If you fail a morale check with a demon unit, you don't fall back, you instead just suffer D3 automatic wounds with no saves of any kind allowed. Um, and that includes damage mit because they're classed as a save. So you've effectively got a fearless unit for the, the downside of taking D3 wounds, but you are allowed to do evades as normal, which is obviously the large downside of the fearless special rule. So I actually think it balances out um, into a preferable rule almost compared to fearless where you can't evade because the, the offset of being able to evade, like ignoring a third of the wounds coming in to your units, I would say is much better for you than the downside of taking D3 wounds if you happen to fail a leadership check. So those are to bear in mind as we get into the army list. There's one thing that tinkers with that and that's the gargantuan unit subtype. Um, and I think it's been quite well thought out. So you're not affected by special rules which modify characteristics like a Primarch isn't. Uh, so strength and toughness isn't negatively affected except for by the demon unit type special rule. So you will be affected in the first game turns and final game turns by those pos positives and negatives. You can count as 10 models for purposes of outnumbering in terms of the Night Lord special rules. Uh, you can only make reactions to Armagers, Dreadnoughts, Primarchs, Mechanized, or Vehicle units, or any model with wounds characteristic of eight or more, so other gargantuan demons. Um, you get successful wounds with the poisoned and fleshbane must be re-rolled, re which is good. You can react with all shooting weapons as part of a reaction. You can't be joined by non-gargantuan units. Um, and also in this caveat is that no model with a gargantuan unit type uh, may join a unit that doesn't have the gargantuan unit type. So that's slightly different from monstrous, where a monstrous unit can join a non-monstrous unit, but a monstrous unit cannot be joined by a normal infantry character. A model with the gargantuan subtype ignores all effects of all psychic tower powers uh, are affected by any attack with the Psychic Focus special rule. Weapons with the four special rule um, against a model with Gargantuan are not affected. Weapons with the four special rule that are used to make attacks against a model with a Gargantuan unit type are not affected and are resolved normally. I don't know whether I'm being stupid, but I think that sentence means that Basically, you're not affected by the instant death of force. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to pause for a second. So I just paused for a second and yeah, I, th I, I don't know whether that's a great sentence. <laughs> so basically, on top of all of these, you get to pick an etheric dominion. So this will be basically picking whether you're undivided, Khan, Slanesh, Nurgle, Zinch or a couple of others to give a more diverse demon range to your army. Now, you've got to pick one for your entire army. You can't mix and match within the army. Um, so it's all got to be from the same god, effectively. You get Aetheric Dominion, which is encroaching ruin. When you 
are a unit composed entirely models with this special rule, which it's going to be because your entire army has it. When you fail a morale check, you only suffer one wound rather than d3. In addition, you gain move through cover. So a strong rule move through cover is going to need, mean that you effectively have frag grenades, which is a massive downside to this army and something that you'll struggle with if you've not got this dominion. I think it's really worthwhile having. When I initially read it and I was like, one rather than D3, that's rubbish, move through cover. Oh, rubbish, I'll just take wings or something. But the move through cover element to it, so that you ignore cover that you're charging into, so not striking an initiative one, so you go before power fist, is really, really good. Like, it's, it's definitely worth a shout. Next, we've got the Etheric Dominion Heedless Slaughter. Effectively, this gives you an 8-inch being forced to charge range. So, if there are more than one eligible target, choose the target of the charge, so long as it's within 8 inches. This isn't going to stop you charging something 12 inches away, but it's going to force you to charge if they're within 8. Now, the next bit of this stipulation is that if you've shot a unit that's outside of charge range or that 8 inches, you still can't charge a unit that's eight inches away. So you can mitigate this slightly if you've got a shooting weapon by shooting a further away unit, so therefore aren't forced to charge the unit within eight. If you do charge though, um, and charge in general, not just within eight, you gain plus one to the charge, plus one to see if you win the combat and plus one to sweep. So actually really, really nice for just making sure you get the charges and making sure you mop up when the charge is done. You get pu pu putrid corruption. You gain heavy as well as the corrupted resilience special rule, which is effectively um, a damage mitt of five up. The wound is discounted on any other results. Um, it's not. And if the wound has instant death, psychic focus or force, you don't get this save. So if the un if it's double your toughness with the strength of the attack, you're not getting this save, just like a normal feel no pain. So I think that that could, I suppose they added the force bit, so maybe needed to reword it again. Just basically feel no pain that you don't get against force. Rapture sensation. Now this is effectively the Empress Children special rule with just a few caveats. Um, when you make a successful charge, unless the charge is disordered, models with this special rule make their attacks at an initiative step one higher than normal. So any unwieldy weapons, uh, let's just pick one at random. The Sovereign Great Blade that you can see hopefully in the bottom right of the screen, I've tried to set it up. So there's a bit more of the confusing special rules on screen at time. Um, the Sovereign Great Blade is unwieldy. You'll be going to initiative two with your strength 11, I think it is, in total, including your base strength. Brutal three, murderous strike, five up weapon. Um, and that's really good, right? Um, the downside to this is that you don't have frag grenades. So when you charge into cover, that will be disordered and therefore you won't get the benefit of this special rule. So you're gonna to have to be very careful with your demon movement. And it's it's not as much of a problem in an Empress Children army when pretty much everything has frag grenades, but here that's going to come into it and you need to be aware of it. You get to reroll blind checks as well for any time you're facing Castellax or Myrmidons. Um, but it's a nice little special rule that gives some benefits and feels very slaneshy, right? Moving on, we get the formless distortion special rule. So at the beginning of each fight, subphase, roll a d3 for each unit composed entirely of models with this special rule locked in combat. All close combat attacks gain the following special rules. So you gain concussive one and lance on a on a one. On a two, you gain reach one, which is really nice for that plus one initiative step, and that can be in any turn, but obviously only going off on a two on the D3. And then Vorpal Talons, Shred and Sunder, um, which is very nice. A bit random. It's, I'm not going to say it's the, the greatest of the Aesthetic Dominions. Obviously a bit uh, zinchy, but 
because it's just random and you can't rely on it, I don't find these types of rules the best. It, and I think that's why they've sort of defaulted to stuff like plus one in, invulnerable save for Zinch stuff in a lot of the game systems. The randomness is both, I find very hard to remember to do, and also because you can't rely on something, it doesn't make for the best units, even if it is a bit fluffy by having that such random things. Infernal Tempest, you gain Hammer of Wrath 1, or if you already have Hammer of Wrath 1, increase it by 1. All wounds inflicted by the Hammer of Wrath gain Deflagrate, which is really cool um, with the auto hits, being at strength plus 1 in the first two turns because of your Demon special rule. It can really do some damage in the deflag, or especially on bigger creatures. Well, I suppose even on your smaller creatures, but on the bigger creatures, whether you're doubling things out with your strength, really, really nice. You gain a shooting attack with the following profile, Elemental Eruption, 8-inch range, AP5, Assault 2, Deflag, and Retaliation, which is a new special rule we've not seen before. You can only be made with weapons using the special rule as part of a reaction, and automatically hit the target without needing to roll to hit. So, quite good. It's obviously more of a combat one. It, it's almost a Zinchy one as well, as well as the random one above, which is like the sort of the morphing aspect of Zinch. The flames of Zinch for this Infernal Tempest fit very, very nicely with like brimstone, yellow and blue horrors, throwing fire at the targets. I don't know how much I'd be using the the actual reaction weapon. I suppose the the amount of shots you get really stack up and with the auto hits, it could be nice in a large unit performing that reaction. But I do find holding the line, especially in a combat-focused army, if you've got this as your shooting, your only shooting weapon, the unit's going to largely be a combat unit. And holding the line with combat units is very nice to survive and win an assault. But Hammer of Wrath plus one and D flag is quite a nice rule as well. Ravenous Dissolution plus one to hit rolls against con units containing at least one demon, corrupted, or psycho unit subtype, or the independent character special rule. So this is like Malal's anti psycho self destroying aspect of chaos. And also works against any army because you've got independent characters in enemy army. Much more limited because obviously there is only going to be normally one to like four, including the Primarch, I suppose, but four units tops that you can get that plus one to hit against. Um, but if you end up fighting a load of demons, this is the demon one to pick, I suppose. Finally, we get Malevolent Artifice. Reroll all armor saves against weapons resolved at a strength lower than your unmodified toughness characteristic. Um, has no effect on cover or invulnerable saves. So this is better for your brutes, HQ choices, heavy support choices, where you've got toughness five base. So you get to reroll armor saves against like bolters and stuff. The downside of it really is it's not really benefiting your lesser demons which are toughness four because it's got to be strength lower than your unmodified toughness so even in turn one you're not getting the benefit of having actually like modified toughness five so you aren't re-rolling anything against the majority of weapons in your opponent's list and because you've got quite a low armor saving across demons in general you <laughs> you can't benefit from that reroll. So that is the Etheric Dominions. I think there are some stronger than others, like, but I think they do quite well across to make a lot of them attractive. Like, I definitely think about Encroaching Ruin because of the frags, effectively. Uh, Heedless Slaughter is good for just like getting about the place and charging more often. The Five Up Feel No Pain. I think he's going to be very, very good, but has a good downside of heavy in that you can't run. Rupturious Sensation. We all know that Emperor's Children benefit is excellent, 
but then you've got the mitigating factor of not having frags. And then Infernal Tempest, I think actually really like, I'd really like to try out those Hammer of Wraths. Though again, if you disordered or they, um, they hold the line against your charge, you're not gaining the benefit of basically your entire army's special rule other than the fact that you're demons. Next, we go on to the Warlord traits. And, it, and just in the last section, I don't think this one incredibly... I think the Nurgle one may be the most obvious one to use that you could just get constant usage from. So maybe that's the standout one. But I think there's lots that you can just like throw in there and use and have success with without being forced into one route. Warlord traits. We get Conqueror of Kings. So you gain plus one attack when locked in combat with independent characters. Um, all models in a unit with the Warlord gain plus one strength when you're in combat with an independent character. Um, in addition, you get a movement trait. And that's going to be fairly standard across these demon Warlord traits is the additional movement phase reaction. I, I like the Conqueror of Kings one. It makes your biggest, hardest dude, or dudette, I suppose, because it's demons, much better at taking on the opposing biggest, hardest unit. And largely, when you've got a combat monster, that's what you want to be doing, is just rinsing through the hardest nut to crack with your hardest nut, coming out on top, and then mopping up through an army. Entropic Force means that uh, damage mitigation rolls inflicted by Warlord, inflicted by Warlord with this trait, oh, against wounds inflicted by Warlord with this trait, and all models in the unit that the Warlord has joined only succeed on a six, regardless of value, uh, in addition to movement phase reaction. I don't think this is as good, obviously, if you've got a big unit of Brutes that are not already... Um, already ignoring feel no pains it's it could be very useful just by numbers of attacks however i think a lot of people are going to be going for demon sovereigns which are like the biggest baddest demons and they're going to be ignoring the feel no pains anyway so it's not really that needed eternal reveler we get a unit and warlord with this trait, or the Warlord and their unit, may declare charges during the Assault phase, even if you've run that turn. When charging, you may choose to use the Warlord's initiative and not roll for charge distance. Um, if they do so, the charge distance can't be increased in any way, as in by like using your movement value to increase it. I think this is incredibly good. Like, it's... If you take this with, say, like a winged demon, which is going to be moving 14 inches a turn, you're going to add your initiative value, and I'm just going to flick to the demon sovereign as an example, six for the run. So that's 20. So you can go 20 and then choose to just use your initiative for the charge roll. So that's a guaranteed charge of 26 with no dice rolls having been used. So if they de deploy up to two inches back inside their deployment zone, you can still get them. And even if they go further back than that, you're on movement 14, so you're getting plus three to your charge. So you just roll and you're averaging um, 14, like it's a 10 inch charge. So that means you're up to 30 inches of charge range with a demon sovereign on the first turn, which is absolutely horrendous, absolutely horrendous. Um, and yeah, is really good. You can just reach out and bad touch people from across the board. Walker of Paths, an army whose warlord with this trait may, at the start of the battle, and this is a bit of a complicated one, once players have deployed all their units, including infiltrators and cow scouts, and any rolls to seize have been made, select two units with the demon unit type that are under their control and deployed on the battlefield, so friendly units on the battlefield. The units must be removed from the battlefield and placed in reserve. For each unit removed from the battlefield in this way, the controlling player must deploy a unit 
with the demon unit type from reserve on on i mean i think it means onto onto the battlefield following the constraints of the mission being played so effectively you need to leave two units or up to two units in reserve um then you basically pull the switcheroo and put down what will be inevitably your biggest hardest units into places they weren't previously expected the units placed in reserve may enter the battlefield as normal or via the de the Herald of Unreality special rule, if your army has it. And this is the one where you gain a shooting phase reaction instead of a movement phase reaction. Now, I think I actually like this. I was going to say the least, but no, in Tropic Force, I, I think I like the least. It's this internal reveler is definitely going to be, I think, the best. Um, but you get a fairly strong showing from Conqueror of Kings. Walker of Paths is more of like the ha ha, you weren't expecting the demon inquisition here. Um it's it's good. A gaining deployment point, not points, but deployment supremacy over your opponent is always good. The problem is you might have a fairly sizable chunk of your army off the board. Unless we look into the Heralds of Unreality rule. So the Heralds of Unreality special rule is an army that includes a model with a special rule may select up to two units from the detachment with the demon unit type to be deployed in reserve, basically helping out with this switcheroo of Walker of Paths. If an army includes more than one model with this rule, select one additional unit for each Herald of Unreality. Instead of making a shooting attack, the controlling player of the model with a special rule may place a three inch blast marker in contact with the model to represent a warp rift. The model's controlling player may move one of the units that were placed into reserve using the special rule onto the battlefield. The unit moves on, treating the, basically the blast marker as if entering play from reserve, treating it as the controlling player's board edge. So in the final paragraphs of this, You've got, once all ma models are moved onto the battlefield, the warp rift marker is removed from play. The unit brought into play by use of this power may act as normal in the shooting phase in which it arrives and may declare a charge in the assault phase in which it enters play. So you skip the interceptor parts of like reserves and flanking assault and deep strike. You get to go right up the table and also you get to assault on that turn. So it effectively slingshots a turn one charge out of a unit that previously may not have had it. And that is very good. And we'll get into what units can actually utilize the Heralds of Reality special rule later. Now, back onto the Walker of Paths, as we were just going through this, you, it's not necessary to use that Harbingers of Unreality special rule. I don't, I still don't see it as the best. I still think you're going to be better with like Eternal Reveler or Conqueror of Kings. Um, but you could just get a deployment bonus by having one up on your opponent. Um, we'll get into the actual units that you can take in the army list now. So we've got the HQ units. We've got Ruinstorm Demon Sovereign for 350 points. And this is an absolute beast. So you've got movement eight, so you're innately getting that plus one to your charge rolls made. You've got weapon skill six, as good as a Praetor, not as good as Primarchs, right, but still very, very good. Strength seven, so you'll be eight on the first turn. It's toughness six, wound seven, initiative six, five attacks, leadership nine, three up save. Um... You were monstrous, so you can join any unit. You're not gargantuan, which is prevented from that. Um, you've got your ethereal invulnerability, four plus, bearing in mind that's ignored by force weapons, but there's not, not loads of them about, right? It's even the psychers that we're seeing up to now, this might change, but even the psychers that we're seeing have all got thunder hammers in my experience. Imperium Avatar, that is basically. Uh, when a model with this special rule suffers an unsaved wound with instant death, so force weapons, you're not immediately removed, you instead lose D3 wounds. So effectively, like how it instant death is treated by dreadnoughts. You've got, it will not die 5+, plus, always nice on a 7 wound model. 
Balky Seven, and you're locked to traitors. <laughs> you're locked. At, demons are locked to traitors in Heresy Two. Not mad at that at all. So you come with Sovereign Armament. It gives you an innate two up or two on your AP. No change to strength. You have Brutal Two, Murderous Strike Five Plus. Though you are Strength Eight and causing instant death in the first turn anyway to normal Marines. And you have Immaterial Blades AP1. Now that's a special rule which is essentially rending. Um, ah, no, I'll explain this better than that. Is on a six, you essentially gain the AP value in brackets. So you're AP2 normally, but on a six, you'll gain AP1 and therefore explodes tanks on a five plus, which is very nice. However, I think you're largely going to be ignoring the Sovereign Armaments. Because for the low, low price of 10 points, you can gain a Sovereign Great Blade for plus three strength. So you strength 10 base, 11 on turn one and two. And it then saves you that you're going to be effectively instant death at strength eight all game because of your weapon. You're not going to, on turns four, five and six, drop to strength what is it? Strength six and then five on turn seven. You get Brutal three, which is the one that we've come for as much as the strength. You're effectively as brutal as a Dreadnought, which is very good. Murderous Strike five still, so you can still do in Dreadnoughts fairly well. Um, and Unwieldy. And that's the one that ties into Rapturous Slaughter for the plus one initiative on the charge when you're not charging into cover. Uh, yeah, I think that's definitely the one that I think, I mean, in the day that this has been out, everyone, everyone is going to be effectively identifying that and going, oh, I'm going to be using that. So I don't think I'm cutting any new ground by saying that. And that's what it is. So we'll go through the, the Demon Armory, which I'm pretty sure this has everything. So we can just go through it now. Aetheric Conduit for 30 points, you gain the Psyker subtype, get, select a single Psychic Discipline, Biomancy, Diabolism, Pyromancy, Telepathy. Now, the ones out of there that I would massively recommend selecting are Biomancy and Telepathy. And that's because Biomancy, you can plus one to your strength, especially useful because it tips your uh, Sovereign Great Blade to strength 12. It tips your uh, normal Sovereign Armaments into strength 8 on turns 3 and 4. So you can get away a bit more with the Sovereign Armaments if you don't want to be striking last and utilising that Initiative 6. Um, and yeah, it just... We all know what Biomancy does, right? Telepathy... The one upside as well of Biomancy, the one upside, Jesus, not. The, the second upside of Biomancy is you have a strength 10 psychic focused weapon. So with a five, sorry, with a four up rending. So if you really need to like explode a tank on turns late, like five, six and seven, you can go to that strength 10. You can still double out things. Is useful, definitely. On telepathy, Turn off reactions, amazing. Hallucination, amazing. Does it need too much explanation? Pyromancy could be very good for representing the flames of Zinch. So a more fluffy choice could be that. And Diabolism, uh, if you want to summon more demons onto the board. So finally, we have the Diabolism. <laughs> <laughs> that took me a long time to find it back on the page. We have the Diabolism Psychic Power. And what this is, is the Word Bearer's Psychic Discipline. And a dark and terrible power gives you re-roll determine the charge distance of the charge. If a psychic check is successful, you gain Hammer of Wrath 3 and increase strength and toughness characteristic by 1. So effectively, you gain Biomancy's benefit whilst, like, in your charge phase. You gain Biomancy's benefit whilst also gaining Hammer of Wrath 3. 
So that ties very nicely into the Etheric Dominion Infernal Tempest, which gives you then Hammer of Wrath 4, as well as D-Flag to that Hammer of Wrath, which you'll be doing at Strength 7 and 8 on the first turn. So you get Hammer of Wrath 8, or Hammer of Wrath 4, Strength 8, and that has D-Flag. So yes, you're relying on them to fail two up saves for Terminators and three up for veterans and things like that. But it is quite a nice stack to consider, especially then when you add your demonic sovereign great blade at your brutal three and stuff like that, that'll be getting plus one strength or even just the sovereign armaments being then strength eight on turns three and four. It's just pretty crazy, to be honest. Um, it just all stacks up really nicely with that diabolism. So, as much as I'm saying Biomancy and Telepathy are the obvious ones to take, they are more obvious, but diabolism has a big draw to it. Is And weirdly, the Aetheric Conduit, the ones that I like of it all fall into Zinch-style looking powers. So, next you get a Material Wings. Essentially, at the start of the controlling player's movement phase, you can choose to set your movement characteristic to 14. Now, you won't be able to do this in Zone Metallis um, because it's a fact that you can't set your movement characteristic to different values. You treat difficult as dangerous. Essentially, it's a jump pack, right? It's a jump pack. Um, you gain Hammer of Wrath in this as well, so that will stack with your Hammer of Wrath with D flag from before. Um, you so you can effectively gain Hammer of Wrath 5 along with these wings, Etheric Conduit with Diabolism and the Infernal Torment Infernal 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 Columns uh, the Infernal Tempest yes A strong game remembering these names um, so then Etheric Flight is separate in which you gain uh, movement characteristic plus three. You can move over friendly and enemy models and ignore terrain when in the movement phase. It lasts. If a unit starts or ends in dangerous, it needs to make a dangerous terrain check as normal, even when applying flight and gains bulky two. So you will be able to use this in ZM if you're making a multi role list. Do you know what? I still use the wings. It's the, the movement 14 is just so good. I know you're still a movement 11 with this, but running around 14 inches in ZM still isn't anything to sniff at. And just those charge opportunities that comes off movement 14 are just amazing. So I definitely go for the wings over etheric flight. Um, but that's just, that's just my thoughts. He, he, obviously, if you are writing a list specifically for ZM, Etheric Flight is better because it's just a movement plus, so it can still be used. Miasma of Rage, you gain Rage 2 unless you already have a higher value of Rage, which you don't here. So you gain Rage 2. Very useful. <laughs> Very useful. Bearing in mind if they hold the line, you're not getting this. Uh, Dark Flame, I'll speed up in ease a bit. Ten, basically st template, strength 5, AP 5, assault, torrent 5 inches and fleshbane. Quite good, but gonna make your charge distance longer. I don't rate, this is definitely a combat monster. I don't rate shooting weapons on combat monsters and this is one of them. For me, not worth the points, but quite cool. Flames of Zinch all over the place. Yeah, the unmaking. Uh, range 12, Strength 8, AP 1, Assault 2, Armor Bane ranged. Um, being AP 1, I quite like it, and I'm actually going to... Even with Dark Flame, I suppose this applies, but Dark Flame allows armor saves, so I'm not as big of a fan. This being AP 1 at Strength 8, so doubling out with two shots, I think pairs really nicely with the Etheric Dominion of Heedless Slaughter, so essentially you can choose to charge things further away than eight inches if there's a unit behind the one that you want to charge uh, or the unit behind the one that's eight inches away because you can only charge the things that you've shot at. The Etheric Dominion allows you 
or like has that stipulation still in there that you have to charge what you shot at. You can't ignore the eight inches one. So this allows you to ping off a shot. Yes, it might lengthen your charge, but it allows you to pick what you're charging and with plus three with your immaterial wings, it just allows you greater control of the model that is costing you probably the better part of 500 points for. Finally, we get Warp Forged Flesh. Um, this is a model with this special rule, improves its armor save by one to a maximum of two. And I think you are going to do that because a two up save is definitely worth it if you can get it and you can. So I definitely take that. Um, so general uses of this unit, use it well, use it all the time, run it into things. Um, the one thing to watch out for is this unit is a character. Now it's not independent, so you can't use that to join another unit. What is gonna be going on with your character rule is that you can be challenged out. So if someone remembers to use their chosen warrior special rule, to use their command squad, their sergeant, you can only strike that model. So you're gonna get tied up quite a lot. So it's just one to be careful of. If you are gonna charge into a unit that you don't want to get bogged down in, make sure you put another unit in there which has a character in because as even a tactical squad that's on an objective, so gain stubborn, if they have a sergeant, a tech marine, apothecary in there, that's three phases worth of just holding you up and they're stubborn because they're on an objective. And I know that's like a bit of a, of like a, a, a real engineered situation, but it's just, say like a Praetorian Breacher squad, they're all chosen warriors. Space Wolves have a, um, the Varagir, Varagir. <laughs> Why can I not say that? I can say it all the time. It's just the curse of videos, right? You, the Varagir all have chosen, Command squads, I believe, all have chosen. It's really going to slow you down and spoil your day when you want this unit flying about all the time, mincing everything. Next, on to Demon Hierarch. So for 250 points, you get movement 8, same as before. Weapon skill 5, so the same as most elite Space Marine units, like you're obviously your most frequent opponents. You're one less than a Praetor. Um, you BS four, strength five, toughness five, four wounds, initiative five, four attacks, leadership eight, three up save. Now you have infernal armaments, which are um, this is the first time we've come across these, I suppose. It's strength user AP three, brutal two, immaterial blades AP two. So on sixes, your attacks will be AP two. You've got your Etheric Dominion, Ethereal Invulnerability 4, so it's still very good. Imperian Avatar, so you're immune to instant death like a Dreadnought, still D3 wounds. It will not die 6 now. Bulky 5, Traitor, and this is just a lesser version of what we've had previously. I think really it's in a, a bit of a lurch, this character. Because it's only got four wounds and it's tough. Yes, it's toughness six on turn one and two. I feel this is so much more fragile. It's going to get skipped over. It's, it's a lot of points that can just be taken out by a Las Cannon squad. It can be wounded down by a Volkite Culverin squad. If you do want something like this, I think you essentially need all the ones that I said before in the options that like you want you. Etheric Conduit to get you an extra toughness more than anything else. Immaterial Wings. Miasma of Rage, because it needs to be a monster. You want you Warp Forge Flesh for a two-up save. And it's just in a bit of... That, that adds up to a lot of points. That's now like... What is it? Etheric Conduit's 25. Immaterial Wings, 25. That's 300 points. Uh, even if we just go minimal, 325 points, including Warp Forge Flesh, and you, you've you only got AP3 base. You've only got AP3, and you can't join any units because you've not got independent character. For me, that makes it a bit of a swerve because it's a tactical squad mincer. It's a 
like a veteran squad mincer that could be taken down very easily by a lot of the heavy weapons that we see all about the place. Um, I might be proved wrong by that in the in the meta that comes up, but that's just my initial gut feeling of it, especially as we get on to the Demon Harbinger. For 135 points, you've got Movement 8, Weapon Skill 5, Strength tough, strength 4, Toughness 5. I'm skipping over the BS of 3. Largely shooting weapons, I would say, don't massively matter in this list. Strength 4, Toughness 5, 3 wounds, Initiative 5, 3 attacks, Leadership 8, 4 up save. That can be changed to a 3 up save for 25 points. I think you want to do that because heavy bolters that you don't notice as a Marine player if you're coming over from Marines... Heavy bolters are everywhere and they are painful when you don't have a three up save. Now, the reason why I like the Harbinger more than um, the, what was the last one called? What was the last one? Hierarch. The last, I like this more than the Hierarch is that you get attendants. So the demon attendants have basically weapon skill five. You've got the same profile except they've got an extra strength, so they're strength five, and they've got a worse leadership of seven. That, that entire unit is going to be a much harder blob to remove. It starts off with just the Harbinger for 135 points, but then you gain attendance for 45 points each. So for 135 points, 270 total, you're now going to have 12 wounds, and that is much harder to remove because at Toughness 5, until turn 5 or 6, you're not getting doubled out by Las Cannons. It's going to take Vindicators to double you out. And that makes for a much more survivable unit with that blob of wounds for the same price or similar price to the Hierarch. Your Ethereal Invulnerability is 5+. plus. You have the Herald of Unreality rule built in. And that's the Harbinger only. It's a real good rule. I definitely take it. You slingshot things up the board with this. Movement eight, move up. You place your heart, your Herald of Unreality rule, like template on the table, on the shooting phase. Then the unit moves out, charges in that turn. You've just slingshotted a unit up the board and you're far up the board. They've got Hammer of Wrath 1 for the Demon Attendant, so that stacks in with Infernal Templist, which is really nicely because you strength 6 on that turn 1 and 2. And you, you are getting, I think, with a Movement 8, a turn 2 charge on a lot of your army. You have Miasma of Rage that the Harbinger can take and Warp Forge Flash uh, to the 3 up, and Aetheric Conduit to make you a Psyker which is really, really good. Honestly, this is, I'd say, after the Sovereign, um, which which isn't not to one. So you could have multiple. You could have three of them, I suppose. Um, but I really like the Harbingers, these smaller units. The Harbinger Blade is AP3, Murderous Strike 6, Immaterial Blade 2. And Infernal Armaments, you get um, AP3, Immaterial Blades 2. So it's as good at actually striking as the Hierarch. I'm just double checking everything that I'm saying at the moment because it's still new. Uh, yeah, I, I think this is one of the good units to go for in the HQ section. And just not the Hierarch. <laughs> so on to Elites. And we get Demon Ruin Storm Brutes for 135 points. Again, movement eight, weapon skill five, strength, toughness five, three wounds, initiative five, three attacks, leadership seven, four up save. Three, that's three brutes, nine wounds for 135 points. You get infernal armaments, so your AP three on the entire squad with brutal two, AP two. And these brutal two on everything that we've had up to now is really going to stack up across the entire army. Your Ethereal Invulnerability is 5 up. Hammer of Wrath 1 stacks with your, your in 
Infernal Tempest. Infernal Tempest, let's go with that. Um, he stacks with Infernal Tempest, with Deflagrate. And I think this is a great unit, to be honest. 40 points for an additional Demon Brute, of which you can have up to six, so nine total in the squad, for 240 points for the additional, 275, 375 for 27 wounds. 27 wounds. I think that is a really, really good deal, essentially. Um, and it's a great little unit. It's I say little unit. It's a, it's a great bulky three unit. You need to watch out for basically nothing doubling you out in the first few turns as it gets further in. Oh, Ferris, I suppose. If, if Ferris is rocking about, watch out. Um, but who doesn't need to worry about that? They're not your killers of Terminators. I think that's left to the Sovereign and some beasts that we get onto later. Um, because you just won't match them. You will, although you won't be getting doubled out by all the Thunderhammers, Power Fists, and things like that, you won't have enough output to be able to properly take them on. Or oh, that's been my experience of anything with essentially a power sword, which rends on a six as well. So it's a quite a good comparison. Although you get in the brutal two, it's very rare that you get enough sixes to actually cause a difference. I mean, you need to be Dark Fury levels of Rending and Shred to be able to do stuff to Terminators with Rending attacks. Runestorm Demon Beasts, 110 points. You get Movement 10. So these are like the, the Seekers of Slanesh and things like that. Um, movement 10, Weapon Skill 4, Strength 5, Toughness 4, 3 Wounds, Initiative 4, 3 Attacks, Leadership 7, 5 Up Save. You get Demonic Armament. So Demonic Armaments are AP4, Immaterial Blades 3, or AP3. Material Blades AP3. Um, they've not got Brutal, which is the first thing in the list that we've come to that doesn't have Brutal. They've got Ethereal Invulnerability 5, Bulky 3. 30 points for an additional, and you can have up to 9 in the squad again. So that is 380 points. You can get Etheric Flight, so plus 3 to your move for a total of 13 for five points a model. An Immaterial Flame, five points a model, which gives you a template AP4 attack. The, I'm, I'm half tempted by, to be honest. It's not too much for the model with your movement of 13, because I'm imagining you want that etheric flight. I know I would be. It's, you can get into some nice positions. A nice little small unit of these, just putting out a bunch of templates um, is nice. Do I think it's the most competitive choice in the list? No. No, I don't, sadly. It's it's a nice little unit that'll be fun to use, like moving, zipping about the table is always nice. I don't think it's the greatest in the world. Um, and yeah, it's... It's a nice little unit. It's, I think there's some good modeling opportunities here, like Flesh Hounds of Corn, any terrifying like Hound of the Bastard Will's Beast um, could be very good for these. So onto Lesser Demons, 120 points. We've got a movement drop to seven, weapon skill four, strength toughness four, one wound, initiative four, two attacks, leadership seven, five up save, and you get 10 Lesser Demons, for 120 points. Uh, they've got Demon Armament, so they're AP4 base in Material Blades 3. And they've got Line, they've got Etheric, Invulnerability 5, Traitor, and 10 Lesser Demon, 10 points additional each, so it's a 20 point squad tax. You get Immaterial Projectiles, one points a model. Immaterial Projectiles are 18 inch range, strength user, AP4 Assault 2. And I actually think that's quite a good upgrade for this squad. It is a combat squad, but with this being Assault 2 at 18 inch range, it gives them something to do while the much, much faster, like greater demons are off doing stuff. And if you need these on an objective, they operate much better with some sort of ranged attack to make them useful. And at only one point a model, 
I definitely think it's worth it. Being strength toughness five in the first two turns of the game means that attack is actually like strength five assault two, which is nothing to sniff at. Um, although it will fade off into the end of the game, it's very much an early game army. If your opponent survives with too much into the late game, they can start mopping you up. It does provide a nice, interesting game experience. It's different than normal. You, you will do more damage. And it will be very scary for your opponent in the first few turns because even these lesser demons are going to be absolutely destroying things just by sheer weight of attacks, being cheap, um, and just getting stuff done with that AP 3 on a 6 for the Immaterian Blades. Now, there's not a great deal to say. There's not a bunch of upgrades here. Um, a lot less confusing than the Heresy 1 demons army list i actually i actually quite like the pared down lesser list more based on your actual choices of unit um than this unit that you just endlessly customize because it does get confusing when you've not got a set model as we spoke about before my in, my in-depth <laughs> go into my own head cannon army but you can represent these with whatever you like this i think would be the the barbed wire that i mentioned coming out of the ground going through a few marines to give them a bit of scale. Um, yeah, and he's, he's, I think it's a good unit. It's the one that you're going to be taking for your troops choice because as we get onto the next unit, Ruinstorm Demon Swarms, they have support squad. So Demon Swarms, 80 points a unit for five Demon Swarms. Demon Swarms are movement eight, so back up into that plus one charge range range. You've got Weapon Skill 3, so you're hitting Marines on a 5. Strength Toughness 3, so 4 in the first two game turns. 4 Wounds, Initiative 3, 2 Attacks, Leadership 6, 6 plus Save. Um, so you're going to be ignored. you basically got no save, right? Because against the Bolter, you get nothing. You've got Line and Skirmish, so you actually benefit quite a lot from cover. You've got no War Gear, so you're not getting Immaterium Blades on anything. You've got... Demonic Invability 6 plus, Swarm, Support Squad, and Straight and Traitor. Um, up to five additional Demon Swarms for 15 points each. So for 75 points, you gain an additional 20 wounds worth of bases. So that's 155 points for 40 wounds of bases in total, which is terrifyingly large because they are fearless effectively and suffering D3 wounds after failing your leadership to six is not going to bother you in the slightest. Now, the swarm special rule, anytime you suffer a, a wound from a blast or template special rule, unless it has instant death by having a double your toughness strength, so a flamer on turns five, six does actually cause instant death to you, with the Swarm Special Rule, you suffer two wounds instead of one Blast and Templates. Um, so it can clear you out a bit better, but with 40 wounds, I think it's a solid investment in this squad for how cheap it is. It's got the line. Yes, you are going to need a normal Lesser Demon squad because basically you have support squad, right? So you're forced to. I think it's a solid investment for the 155 points. I'd be maxing out that squad to 10 Demon Swarms and just being lying around any objective that you want to hold forever. Next, we've got Ruinstorm Demon Cavalry, 150 points. They've got movement 12. So the, oh, this is the, the Steeds of the Seekers of Slesh, Slanesh, sorry, uh, rather than the Flesh Hounds that I think we saw before. We've got Weapon Skill 5. We're? Weapon skill 4. <laughs> what am I looking at? Weapon skill 4, BS3, strength toughness 4, 2 wounds, initiative 4, 2 attacks, leadership 6, save 4 plus. And you get 5 for 150 points, so they're 30 points each. 20 points for an additional. So there is a bit of a squad tax there of 50 points for this squad. You get just the demon type. You don't get line or anything like that. Ethereal Invulnerability 5 plus, Traitor, and you get Immaterial Projectiles, which is an, the Assault 2, 
strength user AP4 weapon for two points a model. Now, with the Demon Arm Armaments, it's, it's always slightly attractive because there's always that chance you're going to just do things in by just rending them out. And he's, I mean, lots of these are just chaff units just across the board, right? He says, I'm flicking about just comparing them to beasts. You, the, there's lots of units in the demon list that are just chaff, and they are, that's completely fine, I think. I think where this struggles is that he's not got line. That, that high movement speed, You've got you've got nothing big to really play off or scary AP wise at range to be able to really utilize that movement other than charging. So this is something that you're gonna like zerg into a tactical squad on turn one or two and hope that their strength five, toughness five gets you through enough tactical marines without as much damage coming in return that you run them down. Now I think that can happen, but I'd say you were quite expensive for doing that because I wouldn't trust five demon cavalry to even see off a tactical squad. Like, it, I think it would actually end up in a, largely in a handbag fight that we see tacticals versus tacticals being. That that is fine, but it's this isn't the center of the list. I think having a few units to pad out the list. B chaff is good. I would like to see the chaff with line more, more so. And I think these struggle for a place because of the lack of it. But having cool cavalry units in your demon force, I do quite like. So it's more of a cool unit for me than an actually game winning good unit. So we have Harriers next, 150 points for 10. We've got movement seven, weapon skill four, BS4, Strength Toughness 4. It's a Marine with a 5-up save. It's Demon Armament, so you AP4 with Immaterial Blades 3. Immaterial Wings making your movement 14. Um, you get Etheric Invulnerability 5 and Immaterial Projectiles 1. Um, if we compare this to the Runestorm Demon Cavalry, you've got... A better BS for your immaterial projectiles. You've got cheaper immaterial projectiles. You are cheaper per additional and come with 10 instead of 5 for the same points. So you're getting double the number of shots in immaterial projectiles. You've got the same strength, toughness, weapon skill. Your BS is obviously better. And you're getting double the... Although you've only got one wound, you're getting two models for one cavalry model. So, to me, it just all round fills a better role than those cavalry, especially as the material wings make your movement 14. Now, that stacks a little bit in the, well, you want attack, yes, but because you've got double the models, your charge bonus is going to be plus 10 attacks across the squad rather than plus 5. So you actually come out with more attacks on the charge until you start getting up to like full squads of Demon Cavalry, which then isn't a fair comparison points-wise because the Demon Cavalry is much more expensive. So yeah, this is a preferred choice for me over that Demon Cavalry. It's sort of, with all the, like the war gear, Demon Armaments being the same, I would have liked to see the cavalry have something that makes them like immaterial blades on a five plus or re breaching five so we don't have to make up a new rule it would have been nice to see that but to give them a place essentially but i think they're struggling versus demon harriers uh at the moment so into the real big boys of the list we get the heavy sport greater rune storm demon beast 150 points um and yeah, this is where we start getting back into the monstrous stuff and getting back into what needs to be the damage dealers of the list. So we've had like the troops fast attack where it's not as much damage dealery and it's back into it. So we've got movement eight, weapon skill four, strength toughness five, five wounds, initiative three, four attacks, leadership six, but meh, 
four up save, and you get Infernal Armaments, which are AP3 base, Brutal 2, Immaterium Blades AP2. You've got Ethereal Invulnerability 5, Hammer of Wrath 3, so that will stack very nicely with your Infernal Tom, Infernal Tempest, Tempest, not Torment. So it will stack nicely with that, especially with the D flag. Two additional Greater Beasts for 125 points each. That will be definitely one to take on these Demon Beasts because it mitigates some of the unit tax. Now, this is like the mid-range killer of the list. I feel it's it's not good. You're gonna you're gonna struggle in with a lot of things other than the real big like Leviathan units or Gargantuan units. Um, you're gonna struggle against like Terminators and two up save stuff. So that's gonna be a very specialist thing. You need those big ones for this demon beast is like a a veteran squad level killer. You've not you're not doubling out those like veteran two wound models, but what you are going to be doing is putting enough attacks out. You survivable enough. I think the weapon skill four does hurt you because you're going to be hitting on fives a lot of those veteran units. But this is where the damage starts creeping back up in like into the realms of like being an actual big hitter of the list. Do I think it's worth taking? Oh, I'm. I'm do you know what? Until I've used these in multiple games, I think the jury's still out because of that weapon skill four. But being on that brutal two of the infernal armaments, it multiplies out that weapon skill four, right? It's it's even though you're getting less hits, the brutal two start balancing it out, just get some hits. You'll that you'll wound in the first two game turns on twos because you'll be strength six. And then your Brutal 2 will really kick in. And hopefully you'll have enough to get enough wounds down range. Yes, you won't just delete units. But you'll start dragging things down. Next, we go on to the Demon Behemoth. Ben Behemoth. Behemoth. I always say that. Do you not always say that wrong? Behemoth. 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 350 points. You get movement 8. Weapon skill 4 again. Strength 7, Toughness 6, 7 Wounds, Initiative 3, 5 Attacks, Leadership 7, 3 Up Save. You have Infernal Armaments for the AP 3, Brutal 2, Immaterial Blades 2. 4 Up Invun, Empyrean Avatar, so you can't be uh, doubled out, or you can't be killed with instant death. Um, so Force doesn't just immediately delete you. Hammer of Wrath 3. You've got It Will Not Die 5 Plus, Bulky 7, Traitor, and then you've got a Benemoth Blade for 30 points. It makes you AP 2, Brutal 3, Sunder, Immaterial Blades 1. I think you do not leave home without that because taking you to that AP 2 all the time rather than being reliant on 6s, I think it's just 100% necessary. It's 100% necessary. Um, do you win against a Contemptor? I think you slightly might trade out well, maybe with your invulnerable save of four. The Dreadnought is hitting you on a three. Um, and you're going second. I <sighs> Always horrible to compare things to Contemptors, right? Because Contemptors are very good. This is, I think, where the... the hor right. I need to dig myself out of this hole, this contemptor sized hole that I started comparing it to. This is where, especially turns one and two, you're going to be doubling out terminators. This is what does it. I think it's useful taking these. Of I think avoid the contemptors, deal with them with your sovereign, with your anything. Like just you even trade out for them with these because the, those contemptors tie them up with swarms. Do you know what? What am I? What am I saying? Tie the Contemptors up with Swarms. 155 points and you'll have more wounds than it can get through in the game, even if you fail every single leadership check. Don't be... Why, why is it taking me so long to realise that and get to heavy support? Sorry for the disservice. Swarms, even better. So yeah, we need Demon Behemoth and start taking out the Terminators. This is what's going to be doing it. 
I think you want immaterial wings. You want to be moving 14. When do you not want to be moving 14? Uh, Miasma of Rage for Rage 2. Having seven, eight attacks. No, seven attacks on the charge because you don't add the rage to the normal attack gained. Warp Forge Flesh for a two up save. You see, I want to recommend it, but with it, I think you're going to be start getting tight for points by the time you get an Arch Behemoth in there. And this is where I would pinch it from, especially what I think it will be going up against because they'll be ignoring it anyway and people want to be firing at your Sovereign and Arch Behemoth. Dark Flame, I think, just ignore it unless you really need to not be charging at the closest model within eight inches. Otherwise, yeah, take take Dark Flame if you've taken... I'm going to guess now, Eternal Hatred. Eternal... No. Heedless Slaughter. If you've taken Heedless Slaughter, take the Dark Flame so that you can charge what you want. But, yeah, he's Terminator Killers here. And then Arch Demon, 500 points. This is the real big boy of the list. You get movement eight, weapon skill seven. So you're now back to hitting things really well. Ballistic skill five, yes, ballistic skill five. Strength, toughness eight, wounds eight. Initiative six, six attacks, leadership of nine, three up save that can go to a two up. That I would recommend making it a two up here because this is one of the key units that people are going to be firing at. It's got a Behemoth Blade, so that's AP 2 all the time, Brutal 3, Sunder, Immaterial Blades 1. You are Gargantuan. We have the first Gargantuan in the list. Um, so you can't have your Strength Toughness negatively affected other than by the Demon Special Rule. You've got Ethereal Invulnerability 4, and now you've got Eternal Warrior, so people can only ever do one wound to you at a time, regardless of that Demon Rule. You've got Hammer of Wrath D3, which is... An interesting choice because the normal Behemoth has a Hammer of Wrath 3. Oh, it's an Arch Demon, not an Arch Behemoth. Hopefully, everyone knew what I was talking about. It will not die 5 plus, traitor. Uh, Etheric Conduit, 40 points. Yes, I think you want that. Immaterial Wings, 30 points. Yes. Miasma of Rage. Yes, I want two more attacks, please. Um, the Unmaking, if you've got the Heedless Slaughter. How can I forget this so many times in the same? Heedless Slaughter, I didn't. Yes. Success. Uh, yeah, and I think this is pretty much needed, this Archdemon. Although it's a Lords of War, 25% of your list, just keep it under 25%. Like It's really, really going to help your list out to have these big demons in there. That are guaranteed AP2. Um, and this is this is one of them. That extra psych is really going to help. It's great. On to some things that I really need to read in depth. So we've got Cabanda Unbound, 575 points. They missed a trick there, not making it Khan's number. Demon General of Cygnus. So Cabanda is movement eight, weapon skill eight, ballistic skill five, strength toughness eight, wounds eight. I see what they did. Um, initiative six, seven attacks, leadership 10, save three plus. Uh, you get one commander in the unit composition. The armaments of commander and in Carmine wings. Demon character, gargantuan unique. So sadly, you're going to be challenged out, which is a problem that the arch demon doesn't have. You can't challenge out the arch demon. Insert into Arch Demon. So, so one big benefit of this Arch Demon is that you don't have character, which your sovereign has. And that means that you can't be challenged out. So you will definitely be able to be wiping through squads with your attacks that will be hitting on threes because you weapon skill seven. And it's a real big bonus to this. I know it's a Lord of War choice, but I think it's it's going to be your main centerpiece for just doing things in because of that. Basically because of the downsides of the character rule that affect your HQ choices. So commanders, 
heedless slaughter etheric dominion i imagine you can well you can only have one in an army so if you take commander you're locked to heedless slaughter so weirdly then want a load of shooting weapons in your list to be able to charge what you want you get character gargantuan and unique um so you can only have one commander ethereal invulnerability four adamantium will three plus eternal warrior eternal rivalry with sanguinius hammer of wrath d3 hatred sanguinius it will not die five plus rampage d3 plus one scythe of hatred and skull keeper so what is Skullkeeper? Skullkeeper is all models with the demon type and heedless slaughter within 12 of Commander gain rage three. In addition, you make an additional reaction in the movement phase. It's a nice special rule, especially benefiting multiple units, any that are within 12. I like the warlord traits that benefit like your wider army rather than just the warlord, and this is one of them. It, whether or not he's better than some of the generic warlord traits, I think oh, it depends on whether you get how many units get held the line against. It's I, I don't think anything is going to be better than Eternal Reveler when it really comes down to it, but it's a very nice warlord trait that has multiple use across the army because it just magnifies out your entire army's or your entire bubble of armies attacks on the charge. In Cardinine, in Incarnadine wings. Yes, I can say things. 14 inch movement, right? Um, you can still run with it. It's just a jump pack. Eternal rivalry. If the enemy army includes Sanguinius, if it's removed as a casualty in a challenge, um, you score two victory points in addition to any points scored for Slay the Warlord. However, if Commander is removed as a challenge, as a casualty in a challenge with Sanguinius, you lose one victory point. So I see that we've got a comparison of Sanguinius to Commander coming on. Scythe of Hatred. At the end of any assault phase, after the results of any combats have been worked out and sweeping advances and consolidations have been completed Kabanda may use a special side of hatred attack uh to resolve this attack the controlling player place a hellstorm template with the narrow edge in contact with Kabanda's base any unit with models underneath the template suffers a number of automatic strength six ap dash hits equal to the number of unsaved wound caused in by melee attacks made by Kabanda during the, the preceding assault phase so basically it's an it's a Hellstorm template strength six uh, after the assault with the number of wounds you did equal to the assault. It, it's very, it's situationally good. The AP dash lets it down slightly, but I imagine it would be horrendous if it wasn't AP dash because you only need to slightly clip a unit to get it. So you, and the temp, that template is big. I really like that special rule. I think it adds a lot of character to Kabadna um, and makes him a bit of a baller. Take out some chaff units and then just basically deflag the assault results onto all of the units. The armaments of Kabadna have two profiles. You've got melee, which is plus four strength, AP two, two-handed Sunder Immaterium Blades one, which is sort of by the by. It makes you strength 12, the problem with it is that it's not got Brutal 3 like the Sovereign Great Blade or Benemoth Blade. The Sovereign Armaments even have Brutal 2 and Murderous Strike, which I know this is Strength 12, but when you run into a, like a Dreadnought, which is Toughness 7, you can't even get a 5 up to instant death it. You're going to have to be doing straight wounds to it. And it puts a bit of stopper into Commander. Uh, the ranged attack is strength 6 AP2, assault 7, which is good, right? It's, it will make you charge distance longer, but with the in Carmine wings, you get plus 3 to your charge. At only range 6, you can't be making your charge too long because you can't kill outside of your range of your weapon. So it's, it's very good for just plucking down some, some wounds on a unit you're about to charge. 
Um, as a whole, Kabanda, I quite like. I don't know whether... I, well, I, I like because of the Hellstorm template. I don't think he's the most brilliant challenge character, and I think that's what's going to let him down. So a quick look at Sanguinius. I didn't need to look too hard in that, basically, Sanguinius doesn't have Brutal as well. What you do have is Moon Silver, and against Demons, any wound counts as two wounds instead. That is an attack that is at Strength User. So that's only Strength 6, but you do have the Blood Angel special rule to be Strength 7 on the charge. So... If Sanguinius gets the charge, you're going to be weapon skill 9 with Sanguinius. And I, do you know what? I think it's going to be a close run thing between Cabanda and Sanguinius. It's just a shame that because of the Eternal Warrior that Cabanda has, because of the Eternal Warrior that Sanguinius has, yeah, I, I'm sure it's going to be a close run thing because of the the toughness of Gabanda negating Moonsilver's blade effective, brutal, by being a higher wound value. If you do end up playing this, let me know in the comments and let me know how it has gone with Sanguinius versus Gabanda. Uh, I'm re actually really interested in knowing the results. I've not got Gabanda's model. Um, I'm, Sanguinius is in the next room. If anyone has Gabanda's model and fancies a game, come up and I will play you with Blood Angels versus Cabanda and we can work it out once and for all. Next, we have Corblack's Utter Blight. Corblack's Utter Blight. 420 points, or 430 points. Um, you've got Movement 7, Weapon Skill 7, Strength 7, Toughness 8, 9 Wounds, Initiative 5, 5 Attacks, Leadership 10, 4 Up Save. Um... You've got a Noxious Maw, which gives you plus one strength, so strength eight, so you're doubling out Marines. AP two, Melee Murderer Strike four, so you can do in a Contemptor with your four up Murderer Strikes. You have a Theric Dominion Putrid Corruption, so you get a five up Feel No Pain, strong. You get a four up Invulnerable Save with Imperium Avatar, for taking D3 wounds instead of auto-removed by force weapons. Adamantium Will 3 plus, Hammer of Wrath D3 plus one, Herald of Pestilence, which does, duh, duh, duh. what does Herald of Pestilence? Oh, there it is. Uh, you gain Biomancy, <laughs> you gain Biomancy. Oh joy, that's, that is actually the one that you want. Or one of the ones that you want is good. So you're not too upset about having Biomancy. Noise and Tide of Flesh. Noise and Tide of Flesh. So what, what a rule of that. Um, you can suffer no penalty through moving or charging through difficult terrain. However, if you're destroyed nearby units, suffer a strength 6 AP dash hit for each model within 5 inches that does not have the unit demon unit type. So you're, you yourselves are unaffected. The opponents will be suffering strength six hits. Any unit that suffers one or more hits must take an immediate pinning check. So not wounds, hits. Once all hits and pinning checks have been resolved, you then remove from the battlefield. It will not die four plus, will keep you around for a long time. Uh, Unbound, traitor, Lord of Decay. Lord of the decay is that uh, all units with putrid corruption within three inches can reroll failed damage mitt and feel no pain x special rules additional in the movement phase that is very powerful you a basic if you can make a death star of although it won't be in the same unit of core blacks core backs, your lords of war choices your sovereigns, stuff like that. I suppose Corbax is not a, a Lord of War, but if you can make three sovereigns surrounding Corbax, it's going to be incredibly tough to get rid of. Um, and his actual damage output himself, with Biomancy included, is up there. He's not the best challenge character of all time, 
but the buffs that he's going to give to your army are good. He's very survivable. He's got more wounds than anything else in the list, I think. He does. Finally, we get on to Samus Unbound. And one thing that I've missed on all of these is the Unbound special rule on Commander Samus and Korbax. You can't use both an Unbound and a Bound version in the same list, so no multiple Samuses, multiple Korbaxes. And that's just to represent their different methods of entry into the plane of reality, right? It's it's a one is bound by a psyker. These are the unbound versions, so let's see how he is. 380 points. You get Samus, movement eight, weapon skill six, so he's back to um prayer to levels of weapon skill. Strength eight, toughness seven, wound seven, initiative seven, four attacks, leadership ten, three up save with the Blade of Samus. The Blade of Samus is AP2, Armor Bane Melee, Murderous Strike 5 Plus, and Material Blades 1. So he's missing Brutal, which you obviously get on your Sovereigns and all stuff like that. It's such a big rule in Heresy 2. It's a shame to be that all these characters are missing it especially when there's so much access to it in the rest of the list that it feels like they just pale a bit. Um, saying that, it's not the worst stat line ever. Like, it's Murderous Strike 5. is you, You're not going to reliably get through Dreadnought because of the invulnerable saves, but at least it's got a bit of a bonus to it. You've got Etheric Dominion Encroaching Ruin, which is only take one um, wound if you fail a leadership check and count as having moved through cover. So you've effectively got frag grenades. That means you can make use of your rage three much more, um, <laughs> much more usefully rather than having to only charge people not in cover. You get whispers of madness, which is granting the following. If Samus has been placed in reserves and has not yet arrived, uh, the reserve rolls made by the opposing player at minus one, which is a cool little rule. Any models without the demon type within 18 inches must reduce leadership by minus two when making psychic checks. So good luck getting off force. It protects your units that much more. Um, it's culminative with other effects that reduce leadership, such as fear, and you are a fear-causing model at minus one. Just st generic for being a demon. Oh, and you increase your fear one to fear two when locked in combat. So if you're in combat with a Psyker, that's taking minus four to their leadership based on this, which is very good. Your Warlord trait gives you the Imperian Avatar special rule is replaced with Eternal Warrior. Uh, so you take one wound instead of D3 from force weapons and things like that. Automatically has the end and the death as a warlord trait and may not select any other. Uh, when fighting in a challenge, successful invulnerable saves taken against Samus must be re-rolled. In addition, an army with Samus is unbound gets a movement phase reaction. Now, I think that <laughs> he's not the best character in the world. Re-rolling successful invulnerable saves is very good. It's it's not quite brutal because they've got to have failed it first to get that multiple saves, but it's getting on for it. And with your strength eight natural, he's he's going to be doubling out any fails. So he, he's going to be very scary. So he hits on fours to a Praetor, twos to wound, re-roll successfully in Vuns. He's going to be scary. He's going to be scary just like with any of these characters. Watch for them getting stuck in those challenges with chosen warriors, multiple units of characters. Like, you don't really want to be fed a suzerain a turn for 10 turns, do you? Um, yeah, and that, that actually brings us to the end of the list. If you enjoyed watching this first look at the Demons of the Ruin Storm, don't forget to hit like, comment, subscribe, and press the bell icon for new videos. All of that lets me know that you want to see more videos like this. I'll prioritize the newer content and getting new armies covered. And even if you just really like demons, get it covered. And 
I'll come back to it sooner with a more meta review as I cut, as I start playing and facing demons that bit more. If you really like it, there is a Patreon link below where you can get access to the Discord. You can get a bouncy tray, dice to go with the bouncy tray, audio only versions of these videos, as well as ad free videos for all the videos that appear on the channel. And with that, I'll close it out. See you in a bit.